Hello, I'm Maria from the Richlands Homeschool Life. It's Friday, so I'm not doing a homeschooling video today. Um, today I'm just going to be vlogging about what's going on with our new project, how the shed's shaping up or isn't shaping up, whichever the case may be. So I'm going to just nip you out there in a moment and show you what we have done. And then um, I'm going to come back and I've, I've been asked a few questions, so I thought, oh, I'll answer them just to sort of clarify what we actually are doing so we'll pop outside and I'll show you what's happening out with the shed at the moment and uh, oh I had another upset actually when I went out I'll, I'll just tell you I won't go into the garden show you because I've got to get on my wellies out the box it's been raining hard and everywhere's wet and sludgy but I'm all right just popping around to the shed but I noticed on my um, Brussels sprouts to my gardens I've got caterpillars this time of the year caterpillars are eating their way through the Brussels sprout leaves I can't believe it I mean anybody who's been watching the garden videos throughout the year will have seen that I've covered them all up to beat the caterpillars this year because last year everything got annihilated by them but I thought oh it's safe now we, we took all the covers off a while ago and most produce has been eaten and by us that is <laughs> and it's just the parsnips and the brussels sprouts have got out there but i looked the other day and they are full of caterpillars absolutely full i would have shown you but for the weather we can't pop into the garden at the moment but um might pop in the green as well we're outside because i did plant some experimental lettuce and i'd like to see how it's doing so i might pop in there and have a look at that but first of all, we'll go around to the shed, which if anybody watched last week's um, vlog, we're starting a new project, um, Hoppities, rabbit grooming and boarding. And the black shed I've got around there, which I've never really taken anybody in because it's been a storage shed. So you've perhaps always seen it in the garden, but never been in it. But last week I took you in and I showed you what it was like inside and sort of an idea what we're gonna do. And we'd had a disaster. It had rotted at the bottom so we needed to repair that we didn't know if we'd have to repair the whole wall we thought that it was only going to be a bit of it was hoping it was only going to be a bit of it which luckily it did turn out to be a bit of it but the worst scenario was if the lot had rotted and we'd have had to knock it all down and add a new one but that's a really good shed i mean we had we've had the shed now oh gosh that's 30 years and we bought it off an elderly gentleman that was our neighbour who'd had it for a long, long time before that and used it as a workshop. So it's probably, I don't know, it must be going on for about 50, 60 years this shed, but it's really solid. So we did want to save it if we could. And so far it's looking like we have, but we'll go around there now and we'll have a look what he's done with it. Right, the picture might be a bit fuzzy in here because there's no light on the electrics not in here at the moment Dean's been working off an extension which isn't in here at the minute but you can see what we're looking at that's where the holes was I showed you the wood last week that we bought to repair it and that's what he's done his hardest job was bringing it back in but he did manage so there are the bits going up that are white that are okay we thought that that might have been damp but that was okay just where the paints peel because it's cold in here I think so yeah everything was okay the rest of the shed was all okay it's like a junkyard still and that's all solid as you can see all the way around so what we've got to do now is line it because it feels really cold in here today we're well, not really cold but you can feel the, a bit of dampness so it's going to need some lining in here um, some lagging of some sort or I've been looking at like this double bubble wrap lining that you get so I'm thinking maybe we could use that because um, it's like like silver coated each side and bubble wrap it's like a thermal thing and I thought then if we can sort of line it all between but then we'd probably have to put plasterboard or some form of board in on the outer side or in the side of it as it is but so it'd be in between this bubble wrap board we thought that might work out cheaper than lagging it but I'm not sure looking at all the different prices at the moment it's all quite expensive 
Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm tripping over things. Look, stuff down by my feet everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I've got to watch where I tread. But yeah, um, there's. We we're looking first of all. I thought, oh, it might be all right using uh, like like a plywood. Some people use a plywood and I thought mm, maybe that'd be okay. But it's so expensive, it's really expensive. It's a lot more expensive just, just buying boarding. But then I thought, well, I don't really want all this MDF boarding and everything. So I was looking at plaster boarding. So I don't know, we might go with the, like the thermal sheet and the bubble wrappy stuff and go in between, because like you can see where the parts of the shed are. <laughs> so if we go in between and line it all like that and then we can work from that and put some plasterboard in on um, this is the idea we're thinking at the moment not absolutely sure we will but that's the idea because we do need to make it so that it's warmer when we put heating in it that the heat is not escaping and we need to make it so that we're not getting damp in here either because obviously we'll be keeping all of my equipment for grooming in here so I don't want it damp in here and try and keep the heating as much as possible so yeah it's never really been a cold cold shed but the dampness is the biggest problem it's that that you know we've got to be careful of so that's what it looks like in here I'll just give you a quick show as I'm leaving here and we'll pop up the greenhouse I want to have a look at me lettuces but I'll if I can get to show you down the side behind here where he's done it you can see the new wood and how he's pulled it back in where all the new boarding is there I think we might um, line all this side with some felt and water comes from the trees that are overhanging as well but the guttering's catching it all now and look at the lettuces. Right, so in the greenhouse, lettuces are coming on okay. I feel damp enough. Not having to water them much because they're staying damp now. But they're not growing as fast as what they normally would. But, um, obviously time of year. A little bit spindly. It's an experiment really. I'm hoping they keep growing, even if it is slowly. I'm hoping that they keep growing because I want to see if I can grow food through the winter even if it's like in the greenhouse I can heat it, I've got a heater in here but it sort of defies the object to it because it'll cost a fortune buying paraffin for the heater it's cheaper to go and buy the lettuces but then having said that you know these are grown a lot more naturally so yeah, I hope that they grow. If they get a bit bigger, I'm going to put them in these pots here, which had the cucumbers in. I'm just going to pop them down into there and give them more space to grow. And it's quite warm in here today. I can feel the sun beating on me. So, yeah. But I'm quite pleased with these at the moment. Quite pleased with them. The only thing I find, I've planted some of the green ones some like tom thumb lettuces and I planted some red lettuce leaves now they don't go red until they're outside in the light they seem to stay green when they're indoors or in the greenhouse so I don't know um, whether we'll get red ones or they'll stay green I'm a bit concerned because I mean look how spindly they look I wonder whether I should try and plant them in the bigger pots maybe I should I don't know We'll see, but it's certainly moist enough anyway. So we'll leave them to continue growing, hopefully, and we'll keep an eye on them. So as you can see, everywhere is still upside down. There's going to be a lot of work having to go into all of that shed yet to make it anywhere near 
what I'd like it to look like and it's going to be really expensive because um, pricing it all up like we were looking at the like fiberglass filling that they line lofts and things like that with um, it's going to work out probably seven to nine hundred pound whichever way we do it we're not talking of a lot of change out of a thousand pounds just to get it all up and running and you know all um, damp proofed and nice because obviously it'll all have to be decorated and painted at the end and then heating will go in there but we'll get some portable heaters for in there and it's just like I say keeping the damp out really because it's quite a warm shed even in the depth of winter it's not as icy cold as going into Dean's workshop or one of the smaller sheds it's not as cold as that but I mean it's cold enough plus like I say the damp so it is going to cost an awful lot of money so it's working out where the money comes from where we can save money and things like that so there are other things to look at budgeting and that kind of thing because for everything you do there's always something else you've got to look at but anyway, um, I've asked a few questions about what we do in our project. So I jotted them down and I thought I'll just answer them just to make it a bit clearer. So um, one of the questions, is this a passive income? Well, I suppose it is, yeah, because my idea of a passive income is money that you're earning from home. So if you're not going out to work and you're earning money from home, um, it's like a passive income. Uh, there are many ways, different kinds of passive incomes. Um, well, there's all kinds of ways. People write books, they sell things, they do courses. And it's quite a long list of things. I mean, that's a whole video on its own, different passive incomes. Maybe I'll cover that one day. But yeah, I suppose in a way it is a kind of passive income, although it, it's going aim to be like a job, but because it's from home, I suppose it would count as a passive income. <laughs> um, another one, will I be breeding rabbits? No, <laughs> no, I'm not going to be breeding rabbits. Many, many, many years ago, I used to breed the mini lop-eared rabbits. Um, I used to breed them for the colours and see what, you know, keep the breed going and get nice colours because people like to have them for shows. They like to buy certain colours and they like to make them for show rabbits. So we had some really nice rabbits, but then it got, because obviously with each litter you can get quite a few kits from it and you can't always find homes for them. And that's not a good thing to be bringing animals into the world where there's no home for them because all the shelters and that are full of, you know, unwanted animals and things like that anyway. And it's not a good idea. So no, I'm not going to be breeding nothing like that. No rabbits or anything like that. We're simply going to be grooming rabbits and boarding rabbits. Um, animal wise, that's like as far as it's going. So another question. Um, if I sell products, because I was talking about selling products in market stores last week, uh, will I have an online shop? I don't think so, no. Not at this moment in time, I'm not thinking of an online shop. I don't think so. Take up a lot of time, I think, to do that. I mean, I, I sell things on eBay, but I get a bit fed up of that because it takes up so much time. And with homeschooling and, you know, trying to set things up out there and doing a lot of things out there homesteading-wise, um, I just wouldn't have time really for an online shop. What I'm thinking of when I talk about selling produce a shop is like maybe when I've got established customers come in and, you know, regulars who have the rabbits groomed and boarded, that maybe I'll have a little stall or something that where I'm selling surplus vegetables and maybe gifts or like crafting things and going to markets to do that like I used to go to markets used to craft things and go to markets and do enjoy doing that so that's the sort of thing more I'm looking at things you know that are in line with selling things we make and produce out the garden that kind of thing but I'm not looking at an online shop uh, that's going to take up a lot of work and I think we'll have a lot on our hands as it is really so no not unless um, one of the others in the family want to do it then it'll be their venture if they do but I myself have no intentions of doing an online shop just 
market stores and word of mouth if we're selling extra maybe i'd advertise extra on places like facebook or something you know if we've got surplus or something so i've got so many if anybody's interested in buying it that kind of thing but we'll see how all that pans out really because i'm hoping that i don't have too much surplus in the garden because i want to try and get it so that we're growing enough for what we eat throughout the year so i'll be concentrating more on preserving things so i've got them throughout the year and doing it that way so that that cuts our food bill down that saves money in other areas and ensures that we're eating healthily because cooking from scratch again i used to do a lot of that years ago but i found myself not doing it so much now and not the same as i was and i want to do more of that as well so i want to really tailor the garden for what we have but I mean, you do always get a run on things. Quite often, if you get a really good crop, you've got more than what you can cope with or more that you know you're going to use for the year. And so um, little bits like that I'll sell. And things like eggs, when I get to run on eggs at the moment, they're slower laying. But, um, you know, in the summer months, and especially when we get duck eggs, they're really hard to get rid of. But maybe when uh, I've got customers, there'll be people who are interested in buying them so yeah that's what i'm talking about shop but i'm not looking at an online shop so uh, another question will dean continue working while i build hoppities up uh yeah he's working at the moment he has had to cut back on some really big houses because he suffer suffers arthritis in his knees and the danger of is locking when they're up when he's up a ladder He's had his knees lock on him a few times and he's fallen a few times as well. A couple of times he's fallen over, but luckily it's been in the house and he's not been able to get up because his knees have locked. So that's quite dangerous, really climbing ladders. So he, he's opting now for doing like um, smaller houses and bungalows, things like that, you know, thing where he's not having to climb too high. But uh, all places where there's a soft landing. <laughs> but no, it is a bit of a worry. It's a danger of what he's doing. And he's not getting any younger, so it's dangerous. Because if his leg was to lock or he was, his legs gave way and he's at the top of a ladder, you know, it could be quite nasty. In fact, it has been known to be fatal when the cleaners have been known to die, haven't they? Fallen off ladders. No one think like that. But, you know, you've got to think, about safety and things like that it's all right having all the insurances in the world but you've got to think about safety yourself as well so yeah he's going to continue for a while and we're hoping to build it all up and then um you know he, he'll come and help me then because i'm going to need a lot of help anyway because i do homeschooling as well i am going to need more help around here if we're going to set a business up so it'll start concentrating around here then. Um, I was going to say something and I forgot what I was going to say. I could talk so much I forget. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's what he's hoping to do. But yeah, what I was going to say, I've remembered, is that by saving money, first of all, looking at areas you can save money will be a big help for him sort of moving, transitioning from doing windows into hoppities because... If you can save money in a lot of areas and you've not got a lot of outgoings, I know things are going up and up and everyone's having to sort of tighten the belts a bit and cut back on things. But as much as I can do that means that, you know, he'll be able to come across full time to Hoppities sooner than later, rather sooner than rather than later, I should say. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but for the time being, it'll continue but hopefully it won't be for long. Hopefully by the end of the year, maybe we'll be making plans then for him to transition across fully to Hoppetis. We'll see how it goes. Watch his space. <laughs> Been saying he'd like to retire for ages, but to him that would be retirement because when he's at home, he's pottering around, he does a lot of the garden. And I mean, I start the veg and he sort of grows it on in the garden. He takes care of it in the garden other than we take turns watering, but he'll take, do a lot of it in the garden. I do it in the greenhouse, but he does a lot of outdoor things. To him, that is retirement, you see, that, that's what he likes to do. So he'd enjoy doing opposite. It wouldn't be like work to him. 
I'm sorry if you're flashing a bit today. I don't know why, whether it's because it's a bit dull because I can see the shadow of me on the wall and trying to wriggle around and get a bit of light, but it's flickering. So I don't know if the light is bad or whether it's my phone's old phone. <laughs> so, yeah, um, like I say, for, he, we're hoping to transition him over. I mean, opportunities might not work and he might be stuck window cleaning. I might have to go out and climb ladders. <laughs> but no, uh, I think fairly that he'll end up having to retire on grounds of ill health. But no, um, hopefully it'll be just enough. We just get a minimum amount of what we need to go out and we can do it. So... <laughs> A lot of people ask this, everybody in fact who sees them asks this, what are we doing with all the pallets around the park? <laughs> Last week I showed a picture of all them pallets stacked high. Well, he's making fencing from them. I might have mentioned he's making fencing from them, but yeah, um, he's making fencing down the front between us and the neighbours along where the drive is. We did have a fence, but it got knocked down. So it's been down ever since. So we said, oh, you know, we'll put this fence up and it'll make this fence. Um, it's made some panels so far. Perhaps I'll perhaps do a video actually when he's out making some more. I'll show you how he's doing it from the pallet wood. So yeah, it's um, they're quite sturdy and quite good. But he's got loads. They're from the carnival in the village last year, and they dad. I can't remember why they dad pallets but they all got delivered and they were supposed to be being picked back up because the company gets money back for the pallets but for some reason they didn't bother picking them up and in the end said oh no you can keep them and they got all these pallets stuck around the park and so um my son who's the chairman on the um committee for the carnival he says oh my dad's after some pallets for the fence and they said well if he can collect them he can have them so you know, a few of them went down and was bringing them back and I didn't think oh there's going to be that many <laughs> piling up and up and up on my drive but he'd given a few away but everybody kept asking about them so I thought oh, I'd better move them around the back because um, you know he doesn't like not giving people things if he can give somebody something they need it he's happy to give it but because we want the pallets for the fence and we don't know how many we're going to need thought we'd better move them around the back and work with them from there and then we can see what's left at the end of it all so yeah that's why we've got so many pallets and that's what he's doing with them. He's making a fence down the front for us. And like I said last week, um, in the Hoppity's area, he's going to finish fencing that off from, from the edge of the garden patch up to the wall that's sort of behind me fridge freezer. Um, he's going to put fencing and make me a little gate so that that section's, you know, enclosed off. I want it like a little courtyard area which would be nice I, I have visions in my mind but i'm not sure whether they'll work out like that but yeah he's going to do some fencing there as well for me because it keeps a dog out and everything like that you know it separates the area so that's what we're doing with all the pallets um do i bring my chickens is another question strange on but do i breed the chickens and not really no i have had chicken eggs and i've hatched them in my incubator but I don't breed them like specifically to sell or anything. It's just if I need some extra chickens, sometimes I might get the eggs. Or if I want a certain breed, I've ordered eggs because it's cheaper and I put them in the incubator. And I like doing that because I like to watch them. And I think it's quite educational as well to put them in the incubator. I enjoy doing that. Last year we did some of our pheasant eggs. Um, we got four pheasants, but sadly along the way, three of them died and one remained. And we found a home because it was a boy and we couldn't have another boy so we found a home for that luckily before all this outbreak of avian flu because we're in a control zone at the moment so we can't move birds around but luckily we'd moved it a couple of weeks before the um avian flu thing broke out in this area so yeah but we don't breed them so no you, you couldn't order chickens with us or anything like that i mean I suppose if somebody had some eggs and wanted them incubating, perhaps I would do that for them for a small fee for the electric. Maybe, I don't know. I've never been asked, but it's not something I've really thought about. I know some people do do things like that. Maybe, I will do. We'll see. But I don't specifically breed them to sell. Uh, I'm not sort of going to breed any 
animals to sell only if I want them myself and then perhaps would sell the surplus but other than that not specifically to sell so um lastly I had made a comment about going off grid last week and that I wasn't bothered if I had to go off grid and um, I was asked am I planning to live off grid <laughs> would I plan for that um I'd love to do that actually I'd love to do that um, but it, I don't know, would it be possible in a house like this? I imagine it would really, because if you've got solar power. I mean, what I have been thinking about, I mean, I'm not planning on going off grid or anything, but things I have been thinking about is because they were talking recently about um, power cuts, there might be power cuts in winter, and that makes you think about emergency situations and that kind of thing. And I was thinking, well, it would be good to get, I know you can get these like little solar packs that you can plug your phones into and charge your phones up. I thought that was always handy to have one of them, a phone solar pack. And you can get little solar units as well for, you know, doing small appliances. And I thought about even maybe in the workshop or somewhere getting some um, small solar panels just to run the freezer and things like that so if there was an outage and I've got all my year's supply of food saved you know I'm not going to lose it because I like to freeze a lot of mine I mean I don't do canning I've done pickling oh excuse me I've done pickling but I don't really eat pickles so much now because of acid and things like that and so we don't really eat pickles i tend to like to preserve my food as in the freezer so it'd be important to keep the freezers going if there was any power cuts anything like that so i am thinking about getting some solar panel in that might be able to run the freezers um so yeah that would be important to me is the freezers um, and i have thought about that because um you know you just don't know do you i remember when i was younger we used to have a lot of power cuts i mean in the 70s we had power cuts i can often remember lighting candles when there was power cuts but we didn't have so many appliances in those days i mean when i was young we didn't have a fridge in my first houses that i lived in when i was really young we didn't have um any fridges or anything like that i remember in the summer my mum putting things in cold water keep them cool and I often remember on things like jelly and blancmange and we used to say to me mum can we have a straw <laughs> because it would set then in winter it would all set lovely but yeah we managed without a fridge I don't think I had a fridge well not me personally but my parents I don't think we had a fridge until I was about 13 so we'd lived all those years and it didn't matter so you don't particularly need things too much you can get by without them but because i preserve in the freezer that's the one thing that i would like to make sure that i kept going so i thought i'd been looking at some solar panels especially for that and also these little solar packs because you have them for camping and things like that i thought they're ideal for the phone so if you was in an emergency you know you've got your phone because you can pick up all sorts on that news, everything, as well as just contacting people and, you know, what's what. So I thought about that. Um, I am getting more water butts around the garden and water things. I'm not going to build a water system. I mean, I, I was a bit intrigued about building, uh, digging for wells and things like that. Because apparently the, if you go down far enough, there's always water underneath you, apparently. So I don't know whether I should go digging holes like that. But I have, we do have a lot of water butts around. And obviously I've got to get some more with the guttering going up on the sheds and things. Um, and I have been looking at Berkey water things. They are... Um, they purify water so you can get water from anywhere i can get from the river i can get it from the water but get from anywhere and it'll purify it far cleaner than what you get it out of the reservoirs that they purify because they put all the additives in afterwards this will be just pure water and it's fit for drinking 
drink with it, cook with it, anything, you know, um, it's fine for that, it's great for that. So I have been looking at them, in fact I've got one of them on my wish list to keep an eye on it because I thought that's a really good idea because for some reason you haven't got water then and your water butt's full, that's great, you always have some. And the thing is if we have a summer like we've just had and it all dried up then you wouldn't go no water, I might have to dig for that well. <laughs> But yeah, the things like that been, I've been thinking about. But I mean, not entirely going off grid or anything like that. Um, but little things, you know, for disasters. If there was an emergency, a disaster, and you lost things temporarily, then I was just thinking about things that would tide you over for them kind of scenarios. So, yeah. But we're not planning on living off grid although i don't see why people can't in this day and age is because they used to i think we just got too used to all the comforts we've got now i mean my grandparents they lived out in the middle of nowhere they've got like a homestead in the middle of nowhere they grew all their own food and um they owned farms around and they hunted for their own meat um rabbits and they kept chickens so they've got meat they've got veg all it was kept all year round they haven't got freezers and that but they knew how to preserve things in boxes of sand and all sorts i remember my mum saying under a bed there was always boxes with apples in that from you know autumn and all the windfall apples and they kept them through and uh, there was always home cooked food they've got outside toilet they'd got no running water but they did have a well and they had a pump near to it so they did have a well um they my mum said that she never saw electricity till she was 15 so and then like with the water they said there was nothing wrong with the well and the water she said it was beautiful water but the water boards started to come round and they wanted to put water pipes to all the houses because there was only like it's like a little hamlet a few houses nothing else all fields and they were bringing water to these houses and they said, declared that the well was unfit for consumption and that they'd got to have water pipes and my granny was forced into having water pipes and water from the um you know like your seven trents and your east staff's water you know all your places that do the water thames waters whatever they all are um all these water companies um whoever was around in those days whatever water company it was insisted that they have to have that and they weren't allowed to use the well anymore and they made them fill the well in with earth so the well's still there but it's all covered in earth now but yeah, they were, she was forced into that and there was nothing wrong with the water. But of course, once they got the water, they got to have water bills and pay. And that's what it was all about. So without going into all of that, um, yeah, I think we've just got a bit too comfortable with everything. And, you know, you could le easily live off grid if you undid everything you did. Went back to a log burner or a fire. We can easily do that. That's not an issue. Um in fact our back boiler if we just altered we got gas fire if we altered that and had an open fire it would also work the back boiler they can connect it to work the same back boiler without altering that and eat all the pipes that way so it could still have central heating and we just do it through you know the coal fire i think you can do it for log burners as well so, yeah, I did look into that once for many years ago and they did look at that and they said, yeah, I wouldn't need a new back boiler at all. You know, they'd just adapt it and away it'd go and eat the house. So, yeah, you could easily do all that. You could easily do it. If you thought about it, you know, long enough, <laughs> hard enough and was prepared to do it, then, yeah, you could easily do that. So... I haven't got any plans to live off-grid at the moment, though, answering that question. So that's it, really. That's all my questions. That's what's going on at the moment. Um, I'll keep posting each Friday. We'll have a look at whatever we're doing, whether it's something on the homesteading side of things, whether I'm doing some food from scratch and baking, whether I'm doing working out. I'd save money in that. I'll, 
you know, keep you updated on all that because it's all one big picture of how everything's going to go so that we can sort of bring our life all here rather than go out there working. We can do it all from here. So next Friday, I'll bring you a video. I might do a money saving video actually next Friday. Might take a look at everything. Need to go through all um, like outgoings and things like that and see what I have got that I can chop off because I'm sure there's a couple of things now that I pay for without really thinking about it so I'm going to go and check that and perhaps I'll come back next week and do a bit of a, a money saving video <laughs> so yeah because I can't see much more going on the shed like I said Dean's going to have felt the back of it I mean it's a bit strange felt in the shed on other than the roof never done that before other, other than the animal runs but I think that might be the best policy actually if, if water's going to come down off the trees above because the next door's trees I can chop off the loose bits on my side but you know that's their trees and I can't move the trees but I think maybe some felt down there will actually be the best answer for that and because the rain comes in that way as well normally the, all the rain and wind blows that way and it all house across comes around this side there's a bit of a wind trap around here which is why we've got conifers behind the fence there or it'll blow the fence in through so that's sort of the direction it will come so i think it will be probably better if that back end is felt we don't need to felt all the way around um i'm going to paint all the rest of it but you don't see the back end anyway never go down that bit the only reason there's a gap is so we can go all the way along so we can sort of paint the back of sheds and do what he has to do if any maintenance needs doing so yeah that's what i'll probably do in there but like i say next week come out i might do a bit of a money saving uh, video next friday but before then i'll be back on tuesday with a homeschooling video so if you watch both you'll see me on tuesday if you're only here see what i'm doing you know our life is shaping up out here i'm not sure what i'd call it but <laughs> then i'd see you next friday if you want to see how i'm going to save some money or how i'm not going to save some money <laughs> might shock me <laughs> So yeah, thank you for watching and um, I'll either see you next Tuesday or next Friday. So take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend. Bye.